I will take an ugly win over a pretty loss any day. And that's exactly what the game was yesterday. It was a very, very ugly win. It could have been a lot prettier. And we're going to talk about the, the could have, would have, should have's. Uh, because they had a huge impact on this game. But despite all of them, uh, the Ravens were still able to pull it out. YouTube, Team Keep It Clean, what's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched yesterday between the Lions and the Ravens. Uh, in this game, it was just, it was something. The Ravens have been giving us panic attacks, uh, heart attacks, just making our minds just go crazy for this entire season so far. All three games have literally came down to the wire. Every single one. Every single one. Um, but something that, before we get into this game, something that I want to remind you all of is that, yeah, the Ravens are 2-1. And, and they've obviously won more than they've lost, which is great. Um, they could be 3-0, but they also could be 0-3. Uh, but with them being 2-1, what I've learned, what I've taken from it, is that the Ravens, They've shown that despite all these injuries, because the, the, the long list of injuries, despite all the injuries, they are still a competitive team and they are still going to fight. And another thing, too, is that this team, with all the injuries and with all the mistakes that they've made, too. I, and I was just talking to my guy Slim about this a little while ago. And this is my opinion. You may agree. You may not agree. That's fine. But I feel like the Ravens, I feel like they can be great. Not good. I feel like this team can be great. But right now they're holding themselves back. The reason I feel like they can be great is because the mistakes that they made have been helping these other teams out big time. The game against the Raiders, Lamar Jackson, the two fumbles. The game against the Chiefs, Lamar Jackson with the two interceptions. The game against the Lions, Lamar Jackson with that bad interception, of course, Hollywood with the drops, and, and Mark Andrews with the, uh, the, the, the drop and the missed touchdown. It just, the Ravens, they can be their, their, their own worst enemy, their biggest enemy. And that's, of course, no disrespect to the Lions, the Chiefs, or the Raiders, because they showed up and they came to do their thing in those games. But Ravens, they, they hold themselves back with these mistakes. If they once they get these mistakes cleaned up, if they if they play a mistake free football game and that's hard to do, especially in today's NFL. But if the Ravens can play a mistake free football game, then I think they get their first win by double digits whenever that game comes. But anyway, this game, shout out to Justin Tucker, of course, uh, Justin Tucker hit that 66 yard field goal. Uh, for the win, new NFL record, by the way, if anybody didn't know. Um, but he he hit that, and it was, it was just wild, man. It was wild because I remember thinking like sixty six yards. Uh, I, I love Justin Tucker, but sixty six yards, uh, oh, we'll see. Because like you can't even do that in Madden, man. You can't even do that in Mutt. So for the fact the the fact that he hit that, and I, I was just like, I was amazed. I was amazed because that that takes so much to be able to do something like that. Um, and I love how with Marlon Humphrey on his IG live after the game, what he did when he was talking to uh, to Justin Tucker and Sam Cook. I love how Justin Tucker, he gave a shout out not only to Sam Cook, but he gave a shout out to Nick Moore. And he was like, oh, congratulations to Nick Moore, because that was his first snap, his first game winning snap of his career. And that's big because that's a lot of pressure. You know, the, I mean, we saw last year with... Uh, Matt Scorer, uh, we saw with, with the, the bad snaps, how they can just change a game, and especially on the field goal unit. Like, I feel like a, a bad snap is a bad snap. Um, and, but the, the impact of a bad snap, I feel like it's, it's even more pressure on, for a field goal. Because if you get a bad snap on a, on a play, like on, a, uh, on offense, the quarterback, he got a, a good chance where he can save, especially you got a Lamar Jackson. But if you get a bad snap on a field goal, everything is done. It, it, it's done. The kicker can't even kick the ball or the, the, the holder. He got to do some wild catch to try to catch the ball. Then they got to try to get it off. By that time, the, the, the field goal unit on defense, they could come in and get a block. It just it, it creates a, a disaster like that. So shout out to Nick Moore. Shout out to the field goal unit for blocking the, uh, the Lions field goal unit um, because you got to get as a field goal kicker 
the further you kick the ball, it has to come off lower. Uh, it has to be at a lower angle because if you kick it high, then it's going to end up falling short. But to kick those far field goals, the ball has to travel. It has, it has to start off a little bit lower. So the fact that Justin Tucker was able to do that for a 66-yard field goal and the line held up and they didn't, they didn't allow the Lions to get their hands up and block it, that says a lot too. Um, so shout out to him. Now, Lamar Jackson. I know everybody want to talk about offense. Well, you know what? Let's, let's, let's get special teams out the way. Sam Cook had a couple of good punts. Cool. Uh, Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay, I was, ooh, I was scared for him because when he had that fumble, I was like, oh, yeah, he's done that punt return. That's a wrap. But Ravens, really, they don't have many other options. You can put James Prochet back there. Now, again, safe hands. But you're not going to get an explosive punt return from James Prochet. You want, he won't fumble, but you're not going to get an explosive punt return. So it's, 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 it's tricky. It depends on what you want. You want to protect the ball at all times, which is good. Or do you want that possible explosive play? So Devin Duvernay, he fumbled, but thank goodness that it ended up being a penalty on the Lions, their rookie corner on special teams. Um, so Devin Duvernay was able to get a redo, and he got a really nice punt return. And then later on, he got that touchdown, which he got both feet in. It was just good catch, good throw, great play. And um, so he made up for it. Now, will he stay on the punt return unit moving forward? I don't think so. I don't anticipate it. But again, I, I don't. What other options do you have back there besides Prochet? Because Tylen Wallace, while they could put him back there, I just, and he is a rookie, so got to keep that in mind. But when he was back there, he looked sort of unsure of himself when they had him at punt return in the preseason. Um, so you, you definitely don't want somebody that's nervous. Um, they got to be like cool, calm, and collected. Because that's punt return. That's a big play. It's a potential big play. And that big play could be either for your special teams unit or the opponent's special teams unit. So we'll see what they, uh, what they do back there. But on to the offense. Lamar Jackson. Mm. Lamar Jackson, um, if you just, and you'll be able to tell, when y'all watch ESPN, NFL Network, CBS, NBC, Fox, whatever, wherever you watch your sports news at, if you do watch it, um, you'll be able to tell who actually watched this game and who didn't. Because if, when they speak about Lamar Jackson specifically in this game, a lot of them are just going to look at the numbers. And they're going to be like, oh, Lamar Jackson, he had one touchdown, one interception. Mm, that wasn't, wasn't really a good game from him. But if you looked at the actual game, Lamar Jackson was lights out for the first three and a half quarters. He was amazing. But he, he wasn't getting the help that he deserved. And it started off with uh, Mark Andrews. He had a big dropper over the middle where he dove for the ball and dropped it. He made up for it, though. Hollywood, early on, had a couple nice catches. Um, but then he had a big drop. He, had a, he, he dropped a touchdown pass. Lamar Jackson threw a perfect pass, threw it to Hollywood. He would have caught it. All he had to do was catch it, touchdown. Because he's in the end zone already. But he dropped it. And I was thinking, man, that, it, it, it stung so bad. Um, and, and this is an example of how Ravens, they can be their own, the biggest, worst enemies, their own worst enemies. And, and, and they have allowed these teams like, again, if, if Ravens clean some stuff up or if they clean it up, man, they can be a great team. And the thing is, they're not even healthy yet. They're not even healthy yet. And they had the guys out with COVID. They had the guys out on injury reserve. These dudes not even healthy yet, man. And, of course, they're, they're never going to be fully healthy. But this team can be great. They got the potential to do it. They got the personnel. They got the coaching staff. But Everybody got to do their part. Yesterday, Hollywood didn't do his part. He didn't do his part. Now, does this mean cut Hollywood? No. Does this mean trade Hollywood? No. And when I saw that from people, it's just like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Did you forget last week? Did you forget the game against the Raiders? Did, did, how quickly we forget these things? Because we get caught up in the moment. We, 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 we're all about the here and the now, but not the long term. So it, it's just a shame when you see things like that. Um, he had a bad game. My guy Cam Neal put it perfectly when in the live stream yesterday. to said, hey, we all have bad days at work. And that's true. We do. We're not for our jobs, whatever it is that you do, whether it's your job, your schooling, whatever it is that you do. 
every day is not going to be the greatest day. You're not going to perform great every single day. So it's just important that you have a good bounce back game and a good bounce back attitude. Well, yeah, yesterday, Hollywood, the performance, it was bad. It was bad. He dropped two touchdowns, two of them. And he also dropped another deep pass. So that, like, again, and, and the thing with football is that it takes everybody. for, And that's what makes it so hard. It takes everybody for a thing to work. Everybody. And what I mean when I say that, it takes the center to snap the ball to the quarterback properly. It takes the offensive line to block the defense properly. It takes the wide receivers running the right routes, the tight ends, whether they blocking or running routes, the running back, whether they blocking or running routes. It takes the quarterback uh, in, in the drop back to scan the field and whatnot and make the right decision. Then it takes the quarterback to throw a good throw. It takes the receiver to make a good catch. It's so many different moving pieces in, one, in each football play. So when you have everybody that's the, the moving, all the moving pieces are working and then one ends up falling short, it kills the whole play. And it can kill a team mentally too. Because they could be like, man, we did all this work, we were doing this, and then it, it fell flat. It fell flat. And especially when your offense is able to take advantage of the defense. When y'all do everything right, and then something ends up happening and it all just falls apart. So that's what happened uh, with Hollywood with the three drops. Huge, man. It, it, they were huge. So um, you can't do that. You can't do that. And, and he knows. Like, if, if we know, you know he knows. He's the one out there playing. He's the one out there playing. And he's, of course, a wide receiver. Wide receiver job, catch the ball. He knows that already. So you know that this week, <laughs> he gonna be on it. Them jugs machine, he gonna be on it. For sure. I guarantee, guarantee it. And next week, you know, I, and I think what one of the things that I think threw him off the most was that this game was not prime time. I was just telling my guy JT, I said, the Ravens should have just told him that it was a primetime game. Oh, them drops would have never happened. But next week, since we play at 4.30 or 4.25 or whatever, then since that's closer to primetime, then we're gonna, we should expect Hollywood to have a good game. We should expect it. And then his boy Jerry Judy going to be there too. I know he's not playing, but he'll be there. So he's going to want to put on a show for his boy and whatnot. That's unless Lamar's guy too, since he's from down here in South Florida. Um, and, and Teddy Bridgewater, he is too. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. But Hollywood, just that, that it was a bad game from him yesterday. Straight up, man. Ain't nothing else to be said about it. So he got to tighten up moving forward. But again, he knows that. He knows that. Um, so Lamar, on the, the last time that he went to Hollywood, the last opportunity where he get, the way he, where he didn't really give Hollywood an opportunity, he went to him in that direction, was on that, that terrible decision by Lamar. That pick, that interception. And Lamar, throughout the whole game, he was just making great decisions, great throws, smart throws. And they were attacking. They were attacking this Lions defense. And I loved it. They were passing more than running. But that's what this game called for. Every game is not going to be the same game plan. This game plan, it, it called for, and what was working. Because it's important that if it's working, hey, don't fix what ain't broken. The passing game was not broken. Just Hollywood was dropping. He dropped. He dropped some big plays too. But overall, the passing game was working. Guys were getting open. Lamar was reading the defense. He was making the great throws, doing his thing. So g Row yesterday... All but, there were only like two plays that I didn't agree with yesterday. There was one early on in the game where it was like third and two where they were in the red zone. And I, I just, I did not think they were going to run. I did not think they should have ran. I thought they should have thrown the ball. I, I expected them to throw the ball, but they ran. And I just felt like that was just so predictable. And it just, I, I didn't like that play call. And then there was another one where not even the play call was bad, but the formation I didn't like. It was a third and five. I want to say it was either... I think it was in the third quarter. I forgot when it, I forgot when it was, but it was a third and five. I wanted them to come out five wide, give Lamar a bunch of options to throw, and of course he'll have the option to run as well. But the the formation that they had, I I forget what it was. I, I got to look at the game again um to see it, but I just didn't like that formation. Other than that, Giro did his thing, did his thing. Um, he went with what was hot. Now. Um, with Tyson Williams, because there's been a lot of questions about him. It appears that the Ravens, in this game, Latavius Murray was their guy. He was their guy. Uh, Tyson Williams, he 
didn't see the ball on the first drive. Latavius Murray did, and Devontae Freeman even did too, but no Tyson Williams. But we did see him more later on in the game. So I guess that's that's how they felt the flow of the game was gonna should go for them. We'll see how it is going forward. I feel like Ravens. I feel like Tyson Williams should have been the RB one, uh, but I feel like Ravens right now they don't even have an RB one. They got a bunch of RBs though. Um, but that was that. Uh, back to Lamar. Um, and Lamar showed again the clutch factor. He's literally shown the clutch factor all year this year. He has given the Ravens potential game-winning drives every single game. Every single game. Every one. And like in the Raiders game, in the only game that they lost, he gave them a game-winning drive, and there were 32 seconds left on the clock. All the defense got to do is stop the Raiders. They didn't even have any timeouts. All you got to do is stop them. That's it. Just stop them. They have no timeouts. None. Ravens defense couldn't do it. They could not do it. So, um, with that being said, uh, Lamar, he got the clutch factor. It's there. It's there. Uh, but he needs people to help him. Everybody got to do their job. If everybody do, does their job, they got they. this team, man, I'm telling you, man, they can be great. And y'all know I ain't got no purple, purple shades on. I ain't drinking the purple Kool-Aid. But this team, like, realistically, they just got to clean up some stuff. Clean it up, and, and they're moving forward. They could do some damage, man. They really can. Sammy Watkins, um, he made a couple catches this game. Overall, pretty quiet game from him. Uh, Prochet, he had a big catch in this game uh, down the sideline where Lamar rolled out to the right and uh, threw a laser to Prochet. Um, he caught it. Kept, got both feet in bounds too And of course Duvernay with that big touchdown catch as well du Duvernay and Prochet haven't really been involved much in the passing game um, It's been all Hollywood and, uh, and Sammy Watkins And of course Mark Andrews Who had his best game of the season so far uh, Yesterday Now he did miss that I, I don't know if it was more on Lamar Or if it was more on Mark Andrews uh, That missed touchdown It looked like it was more on Mark Andrews But Hey, either way, they, 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 they missed it. Missed opportunity. And this was the game of missed opportunities, man. So many missed opportunities. And, and we talked about this in the preview for this game, that Ravens, gotta, they got to connect, man. They got to connect because if you are not connecting, then you allow the Lions to, you're going to allow them to stick around. And they're an 0-2 team. And they're playing with nothing to lose. Like, even though it's early on in the season, this, no disrespect to them, but they know that their season is done. Now, not done, but they, I, 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 deep down, when they, when they think about it deep down, of course they, they want to compete. But I think deep down, like, Lions and Lions fans, they know, like, oh, we're not doing nothing. Uh, but those are some of the most dangerous teams to play. And Lions showed that yesterday. And, and all they need is a couple of plays to go their way, build up that confidence. And, hey, they almost came away with a win yesterday. Ravens let them hang around because Ravens, they beat themselves up. And you can't do that. But anyway, I think that's, that covers everything on offense. Defense. Defense, they were down Brandon Williams. It showed in the run defense. They were down Matabike. They were down Justin Houston. Dalen Hayes, he left with an injury. They uh, didn't have Jalen Ferguson as well, even though he hasn't played much. So they, they, had, they had a lot of people out. A lot of people out. Jimmy Smith made his return, though. Hey, hey. Uh, but um, the Ravens defense, the run defense, they they were getting gashed a couple of times. Of course, Brandon Williams, whenever he's out, it shows. It, it, it shows, it shows, it shows. Um, but the defense, early on, they were, they were doing their thing. They were a bend but not break defense because Lions would get a little bit on them, and then uh, they, they would be like, all right, that's enough, no more. And they were holding the Lions out of the end zone. The Lions weren't even getting field goals early on. Uh, but then that all changed. Second half adjustments. Khalif Raymond. I call him. I was calling him little baby Willie Sneed because he looked just like Willie Sneed. Played like him and all. And uh, DeAndre Swift. They both. This is why second half adjustments are so important. Uh, the Ravens defense. They. They were getting carved up in the second half. 
Um, and then, uh, but Lions made adjustments. They were like, all right, Khalif, like, we got to use these these screens, man. These screens, they should work good. These passes behind, behind the line of scrimmage, too. Oh, yeah, we we got something for them. And it, it, it was working. It was working. Um, DeAndre Swift, he was having a good second half. Jamal Williams, just really Lions offense, period. They were having a good second half. But the, the killers were, 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 oh, I was about to say Hawkinson. It wasn't Hawkinson. It was, the killers were Khalif Raymond uh, and um, Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift. Now, they did. Hawkinson completely was a non-factor yesterday. He had like two or three catches for like 10 yards. He was a non-factor yesterday. They took him all the way out the game. They were like, look, we dealt with Darren Waller. We de dealt with Travis Kelsey. We're not doing this a third week in a row. So they completely removed him from the game. So that was great. Shout out to him. Uh, but they they didn't have a plan for Khalif, Raymond, and Swift in the second half. Swift, he scored a touchdown. That The, the play with Jamal Williams where he got his touchdown, um, it, it should have been a touchdown like two plays earlier by DeAndre Swift when he jumped over a Ravens defender and uh, stuck the ball out, stretched the ball out. Should have been a touchdown then. Um, but Jamal Williams, he ended up getting it. Uh, whew, boy. Um, Anthony Averett had a quiet game. Uh, I think he got a penalty early on, but that was before I was able to pull up the game. But other than that, he had a quiet game, so that's good. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, too. Quiet game. Um, but they, yeah, they weren't really, I don't think they were really attacking like the outside corners like that. They were attacking the inside, though. Uh, Patrick Queen. A lot of missed tackles again. And that's what he's been struggling with all season long. Missed tackles, missed tackles, missed tackles. And getting pushed back, too. Um, I don't know what the solution for it will be. Uh, maybe it's just going over the fundamentals. Um, maybe it's just yeah, maybe it's just Rob Ryan needs to go over the fundamentals because I believe he's a linebackers coach. Um, maybe they need to just stick to the basics because because Patrick Queen smart. He that knowledge is there, man. You could tell why why he took over at LSU. It, the, the the knowledge is there, and now he's in the second year with a full training camp. His understanding of the game is a lot better than it was last year. And that comes with growth. That comes with experience. But the, the, the fundamental part, the, the, the missed tackling, has been, it's, it's been rough. And, and there's been a lot of it. It's, it's so important that you wrap up when you tackle, man. Because you miss a tackle, it can create a big play. Like there was one play where I think it was a toss to the right. Uh, and DeAndre Swift, he, got the, he, he caught the ball um, and Adafe away. He tried to grab his ankles, and DeAndre Swift kind of just like broke off of him a little bit. But then Patrick Queen, he had an opportunity, and he just went with his with his form. He he did that, and DeAndre Swift he he felt it, but he looked at it and just said, um, "All right, I, I'm I'm gonna go now," and he 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 hit it. So it just you 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 gotta wrap up, man. Um, Malik Harrison. I didn't see him too much. He did make one big tackle, but I, I didn't see him after that. Uh, C.J. Boyle was out there for a little while, too. Um, didn't really notice him too much, uh, but, yeah, that was that. Uh, our defensive line, for the, the task that was upon them, um, they, they, they did all right. They did all right because that, that is a tough assignment because when you got so many guys out, a lot of guys out, then, yeah. Pass rush. It's another day at the office. Uh, Wink, he was back to blitzing as expected. Um, and it's all about situational blitzing. Nothing wrong with Wink sending a blitz. Nothing wrong with that at all. But it's all about picking the right situations to send a blitz, to send five guys, to send six guys, to send however many you're going to send. It's all about doing it correctly situationally. Every game is not going to be the same every game. Um, and this game, I think Tavon Young, he got a sack. Uh, Chuck Clark, I think he got a sack. I think that was it. Um, but be, besides that, they were getting there a little, a little bit, a little bit. They were getting to uh, Jared Goff a little bit, um, not too much, but yeah, a little bit. Uh so yeah, it was, it was just an up and down game, man. Oh, I didn't even talk about the all. I talking about the defensive line. I didn't even talking about the offensive line. Offensive line, this game, mm, they were just up and down, man. Uh, pass blocking was up and down. Run blocking. Up and down. Um, as far as run blocking, probably more downs than ups. Uh, they just they weren't creating many lanes for the running backs, man. Yeah, they just weren't creating many lanes at all. 
Uh, for Lamar Jackson, he I think he led the team in rushing. Um, he had to. It was the only way. Uh, so he, yeah, they they just it was, it was rough, man. And Lamar Jackson got yeah pass blocking was bad. He got sacked four times, four times. For your court, for Lamar Jackson to get sacked four times, the only way that that happens if if guys are coming in free. That's it. Because Lamar Jackson, he has good pocket presence. And you know Lamar Jackson, he can make people miss, obviously. So the fact that he, a quarterback like him, got sacked four times, that, that tells you all you need to know about the offensive line yesterday. That guys were coming in free, untouched, unblocked. You get, they they, they got to fix it, man. Week one against the Raiders, offensive line was bad. Week two against the Chiefs, offensive line was great. This this game, they were right in the middle. They were right in the middle. So they, they took some from the Raiders game. They took some from the Chiefs game. They were like, oh, let's do a mashup. Right in the middle. So they, they gotta get they gotta get this thing, man. They gotta get it going. They they got a running running backs picking up uh picking up blitzes. Um the center calling out the different guys who are blitzing. Um, offensive line block. It just it, everything gotta get better. But again, they are their own worst enemy. You clean up. If your offensive line blocks better, you give Lamar time, he going to get it done. We've seen it already. We've seen it already. He can make every throw you need him to make, man. Every one. We've seen it already. Lamar, he don't make bad decisions. He stopped turning the ball over. This team is a lot better. A lot better. And, and again, this is all even, even before the guys that are coming back. This team can be so good, man. They can be so good. Got to clean stuff up, though. It's, it's, it's the little th Right now, it's the little things for the Ravens. It's the little things that they can clean up. Again, offensive line, better pass protection. Lamar Jackson, stop with the turnovers. With Tyson Williams, it was the fumbling with him. Maybe that's why they didn't go to him early on. I don't know. But wide receiver, obviously Hollywood, got to catch the ball. Sammy Watkins, too. He be having drops, too. But Hollywood's drops were just huge because they were two touchdowns in that huge play, too. But every, any drop is big, but his were bigger. Um, but, yeah, wide receivers, tight ends, just hold on to the ball. Catch the ball. That's it. Greg Roman, for the most part, he's been doing a pretty good job. He's been doing a pretty good job. Now, on defense, tackle. The missed tackles is what they got to clean up. The missed tackles. And, and, and really defending the middle of the field. They got to figure that out because it's been tough. The pass rush. Let, let, let's see when Justin Houston comes back. And, of course, Matt Abit. Let's see when everybody comes back. Let's see next week. But even that, that the pass rush, they, they got to they gotta start getting home, man. Um, It's just little things, man. Little, little, little things here and little things there. And you do that, this, this team can be great. And, and then on top of all of that, the guys that they'll be getting back. So... Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Um, yesterday's game was just wild, uh, as you all know. Um, but I, I was glad to be able to watch it with y'all. Thank you for coming through to the live stream. Um, let's do it again, shall we? Anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. Hope y'all enjoyed because we sure enjoyed. Um, and we out, man. That's it. Y'all have a really good day.